today is a good day. These finally came in the mail. This is actually something I ordered a couple weeks ago. Finally got here. Now remember that old Aerie Alexa I bought for six grand on Craigslist the other day? Now this is an aftermarket EF mount by a company called Litax, and this is gonna allow me to put on cheaper, less expensive lenses on that camera. So this looks like the mount itself, and I believe this is a coupler. These must be some shims. Now the camera's over at the studio, so let's head over. I feel like taking the motorcycle today. Let's go. We got our goods here. We got our camera. Here we go. So this is a PL mount, which is like the industry standard for professional lenses. PL lenses are fantastic, but they're also very expensive. So this has to go in place of here. First, I gotta take these screws off. Oh my God, these are on here tight. Oh God, I'm gonna strip these. Uh, I don't wanna do that. Ugh. How the uh, I got one out. I mean, this is the right tool and everything. It's just, do I force it out and potentially strip the screws or do I just, these are just in here so tight. Ah, uh, come on mother. I think this is just too skinny. I can't get a good grip on it. It's like a little pencil. All right, look what I got. This should give me a little bit more leverage, right? Okay, please let this work. This is the only other Torx tool that I have. <laughs> it's not the right size. What am I to do? All right, this is the only other thing that can clamp onto a bit this small that I have. Uh, is this a bad idea? Hope not. <gasps> it worked. <laughs> I do not recommend using a power drill when you're talking about working right next to the camera sensor. It's supposed to be using precision tools only, but this worked. Oh, easy. And it's off, okay. All right, so now what? Did I just pull off the wrong screws? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, shit. I did. Oh, shit. God. I am such an asshat. Damn it. It says pull out the seven screws and I pulled out the seven wrong screws and I practically stripped these screws trying to do that. I'm an idiot. I wish they had said that in the instructions. Don't pull out the seven screws that you see in front of you. Look deep into the holes that are super deep and dark. Looks like a back cave and back there, there are seven screws. That's, the, dang it. This is taking forever, man. <laughs> Why aren't you coming out? Oh, there's a video I can watch. What am I missing? I'm just gonna start taking out screws for funsies now. I don't know what I'm missing. Good thing I got a warranty for this camera. Oh wait, do I just yank on it? I don't want to though. I don't want it to break. With these seven screws out, it's definitely supposed to pop off. I guess I just yank on it and just pray nothing breaks, I guess. This doesn't feel right. <gasps> oh. It came out. Now there's this cable dangling. They really need to give us better instructions on how to take this thing apart. I'm really appreciating now how easy it is to put a PL mount or EF mount on all these newer cameras. Cause those you just take off four screws off on, done. Look at this beautiful sensor right there. And let's just hope that attaching this thing is a little bit easier now. All right, so we got our seven screws nice and tight. Now we just gotta screw this mount on and I think we're finally good to go. All right, moment of truth. Hey, there we go. Woo! Like putting on this EF mount was actually really easy. It was the taking off the PL mount that was a pain in the ass. <laughs> Look at this, it looks so weird with this little stubby lens on here. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this does not have any of the electronic contacts for the lenses. So if it's a lens like this, I can't control the aperture. So I have this kind of older lens. It's a contact Zeiss with an EF mount adapter, fully manual. And it's like a vintage lens. So it wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 200 something bucks. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty good title too. Cheap vintage lenses on an Aerie Alexa. That's a good title right there. <gasps> Let's go see how this does. Oh my God, this camera. This camera is so heavy. Got the little lens on here. We're at an F4. We're gonna get a couple of shots out here. When you look at the background, you can kind of see some of that triangular bokeh in the background. How it's shaped almost like a stop sign. The thing about shooting on vintage lenses is that they're less about getting that perfect technical lens and just having something with a little bit more character. This is actually pretty neat. Check out the way this lens flares too. Look at that, it's like a spider web almost. We got a lot of light here and I wanna open up this lens. So I'm gonna throw on an adapter here, which will adapt 
to this plate right here and slap on this map box over here. And let's see how this looks. It's actually kind of cool how much of a difference you can actually see with these lenses. It definitely has that kind of old school classic vintage look to it. Like the way the flares hit, the way the bokeh looks, and kind of just the colors get a little muted almost. That mixed with the Aerie Alexa that has like that kind of filmic style. It's honestly a kind of a cool combination. And also Sam's wearing a jacket that kind of makes him look like a detective sort of. You know, that's like the detective color, right? Mm -hmm. Looks like a trench coat, but it's not. Detective music. That's so good. Sam is taking one for the team. Holy shit, you guys. Uh, my motorcycle was just stolen. I think. What? Is this real life? It's not here. Quick interruption, that motorcycle underneath that tarp is not my motorcycle. That's Carrie's bike. I'm not trying to do some lame joke where I'm like, where's the motorcycle? Cause it's under a camouflage tarp. <laughs> no, no, like legit, my bike is gone. Did that just really happen? They must have come here with a pickup truck and loaded it on the back or something. Wow. Hello, miss. What you doing? Hi. Uh, just bringing my period one class in for dismissal. Oh, good. Tell me if you notice anything, okay? So, I come out to the Jeep, uh -huh. right? Bye, take a seat, guys. And then I come here to the trash. Can you call the police? No, not yet. Well, hang up with me and call <laughs> Why are you isn't that crazy though? Part of me was hoping that Carrie would be like, oh yeah, remember? I was gonna take it into the shop or something. I don't know. All right, so check this out. This is a shot from yesterday's vlog. Here, look at this. Look at that. Right there. Boom, motorcycle. Last night, it was there. This morning, it's gone. Poof. Thanks for calling Allstate, where you're in good hands. Uh, I need to uh, report a stolen vehicle. Oh, sorry about that. You must have been shot and you didn't see it. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I walked outside to take out the trash and was like, wait a second, something's missing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you notice that when you came in this morning that the uh, dirt bike wasn't there? No, I didn't. Yeah, it's not there. It got stolen? Yeah. Last somebody, night. somebody stole your bike? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, crazy, dude, huh? That sucks. I know, that's crazy. Right, now I want to see how some of these low light shots look here. There's a lot of different colors and lights back that way so you should get some interesting details in the bokeh here. So it definitely has cool characteristics for sure. I've had this lens sitting around for seven, eight years now and finally I'm getting around to testing it more heavily. Oh man, this is looking so good. 85 millimeter out in the city, you can't go wrong. I also want to see how this looks to uh, something a little bit more modern like this. This is the Sigma full frame 85 T 1.5 cine lens. Now I think there's a few things that are obviously different like the chromatic aberration is much, much more intense on the vintage lenses. You can see a lot of that kind of 
purple fringing, especially off the headlights on the Zeiss lenses. Like whenever you see purple around a light like that or off a reflection, like off of Sam's glasses, that's all chromatic aberration that you see. But with much more technically correct lenses, gets rid of a lot of that. The shape of the bokeh, like on the Sigma, it's super clean even if you stop down a little bit. It's nice and round on the vintage Zeiss lenses, but as soon as you stop down a little bit, you see kind of those shapes appearing. You kind of see the shape of those blades a bit. Not necessarily a bad thing, but just stylistically different. Anyways, finally all done with the police report and all that stuff. Got this for insurance and everything should be taken care of in the next couple weeks. And it definitely hasn't been fun and always feels kind of personal, you know? I mean, obviously they just want to steal a bike and you know chop it up into little pieces or sell it to I, I don't know what they're gonna do with it but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'm gonna read some comments to try to cheer myself up a little bit so Pixar is working on a Pixar comes to life series in which they bring characters from the movies to life with the help of look-alike actors maybe you should sign up for the guy from up of course you know I've had just one too many up jokes in the comments okay I'm gonna get so ripped I actually realized how much chubby I'm getting when I started editing that kind of tribute video for the bike and I realized how much skinnier I was just like about a year ago but you just wait soon enough I'm gonna be so shredded and then that will be the last I have to hear of up jokes okay and plus I'm sad right now okay I need some positive comments in my life let's see what else I swear it wasn't this small the title of your sex tape. I mean, come on, there's gotta be at least one positive comment in here, right? Random fact of the day, I was born in a taxi. Oh, I, if that's true, that's kinda cool. <laughs> Just curious, has anyone won one of these giveaways? I never see announcements for them. I'm actually really bad at announcing the winners. But yeah, every giveaway I've ever done, we've contacted the winners and sent it to them. And sometimes they'll send us selfies of themselves holding the prize and they'll throw it at the end of the video. But on the other hand, a few people just kinda like their privacy and I don't really feature them. But here's somebody that won an SSD hard drive.